this segment of a larger lecture will be the first segment in a lecture on the impacts of, of race and ethnicity in the United States in the latter 19th century. And an often used symbol uh, by historians for this period is the so-called white city that was a major part of the Columbian uh, exposition, sort of the World's Fair of 1893 in Chicago, Illinois. There's a great deal um, to be said about this white city, and really that white city refers to the, the, the court of honor, the, the main court, but the court of honor there within this World's Fair site, this Columbian Exposition. It drew people from across the United States. It's that place where you begin to see, um, where you begin to see electric lights and technology and so much that seemed to symbolize America's progressive industrial development, its, its sense of accomplishment and possibility all wrapped up. The court of honor, uh, the so-called white city, was called really a white city because all the buildings, many of them with that sort of uh, Greco-Roman architectural style, had been created so that their sides and uh, elements of their construction reflected. They were white. They were light. They reflected light very well. Really, kind of like the Gilded Age itself, many of the buildings were constructed for the fair they weren't made of stone or marble or any of the, you know, kind of common building um, building materials that we, we think of with, with major works of architecture. Rather, they had been stuccoed and plastered together for the fair. They weren't intended necessarily to last. I'm not sure what that says. I'll let you think about it. It does suggest a certain temporariness, a certain willingness to cut corners for image, certainly for the purposes of the fair. But I think culturally, what so many historians have made of this Columbian exposition is that the symbolism of the white city, which was to represent the highest in ideals of Western civilization, was itself somewhat paltry on the inside. Once you got beyond the, the external persona, the external um, characteristics that were to be portrayed, you wondered how long lasting, how structurally sound those buildings would be. Well again, we, we can talk more later about the structure of the city and hopefully you'll have a chance to work with that some through primary documents and further reading. But I also wanted to mention this World's Fair, this Columbian Exposition of 93 because of the significance of 93. Economic panic, economic depression, financial collapse. In the last lecture, I talked a bit about how that financial panic would affect or ended up affecting American labor. It's notable that at the Columbian Exposition, which starts at a really tough time in American history, the Columbian Exposition, which is like the Pullman plant, it's in Chicago, like Haymarket's in Chicago. Um, but at the time that the fair is going on, the United States is on the verge of being plunged into that horrible, horrible economic depression. It's also worth considering that it's the working men of America who build the white city and who build most of the buildings and work the grounds and construct the grounds and do the landscaping and yet oftentimes they're not recognized. One of the elements separating these working men from the fairgrounds themselves, from the exposition itself, were walls purposely built to hide from visitors from across the country and around the world uh, to hide the circumstances in which these workers lived. It's an interesting kind of notion caught up in American history. 
for whatever reason, it seems quite easy sometimes to simply reduce complaints to someone's ethnicity, to race, to radicalism. I'm not siding with anyone. I simply would suggest that, as with most things, the history is complicated. And it's that very complication I think we need to think about here. But there's even more going on with the Columbian Exposition. It's in 1893 that a historian, and I believe a historian you've, you've heard about when we had the lecture on the West, by the name of, a historian by the name of Frederick Jackson Turner, undertakes to give what will be a very important American uh, historical paper the significance of the frontier in American history or to American history, where he talks about how the United States is changing by the census of 1890, which reflects for the first time that there is no sort of unbroken line of settlement. There is no unbroken line that divides civilization from that which is open and waiting for, waiting for civilization. At least those concepts are bound up with the notion of the frontier and that line of demarcation on the census maps. It's notable that Frederick Jackson Turner here in Chicago bemoans the potential lack of character, of American character, that will come with the loss of the frontier. It's tied in to the vast numbers of immigrants who have made their ways to this shore. It's tied in with the potential unrest of an, of an economy that seems quite alien. It's not the easy sort of nostalgic frontier of ancestors, forebears, the mythology of the frontier, the mythology of the West. Issues about labor, about how this new industrial economy is changing America, they're very complex indeed. Disputes, differing opinions, differing views, violence. Is the Republic threatened now? in 1893, 94, 95? Have we moved away in the United States from some basic values? Have we lost our way? It's kind of a constant refrain among Americans, I think, to ask these questions. And even now in the 21st century, we still see these questions being asked. Again, it's not my place to try and answer those questions for you, but to make sure that you're aware I think of the, the connections that bind us now uh, back to sort of earlier generations of Americans. And also a sense that I need to get across of how very different the circumstances were, how different people thought, how they looked at the world. I think the Columbian Exposition is sort of a good place to start because it gives us that sense of, a, of people who are becoming more like us in some ways. The, they're moving this direction. Industry and corporate interests have taken hold. And yet, they're very different from us, I think. It's something for you to think about. As we approach questions of imperialism, questions of race, questions of culture, in this lecture through the various segments that we'll do.